Okay, so the observer, the observer exercise. So with the observer, uh, the aim of the observer is to, it's a process of uh, self-inquiry and inquiring as into what's the nature of self. So, so the first thing to do is to then get an experience. Ask yourself experientially, how do I experience myself now? So, uh, and then are you aware of thoughts? Uh, are you aware of yourself? Is the nature of yourself thinking? Is the nature of yourself awareness of the physical body? Uh, is your awareness um, any sensations like uh, breathing or lungs or whatever it may be? How, do you, how are you experiencing yourself? Now, just gonna switch to, I'm gonna hold the remote control there, or if there's an object in front of you, just observe the object and notice if it's a meaningless object like remote control or a glass or something that's in front of you in your room, that as you observe a meaningless object, it's very clear from your spiritual experience that the object is not you. You are the detached observing. What I mean by detached observing, there's clear space and recognition that the self is not a cup, the self is not a remote control. The self is not that object that is out there. The self is the observer of the object and there's clear spiritual experience that the object is not you, whether it's a, a mug on the table, a remote control on the table, a light in the room or a tree in the garden, whatever it may be. So with that spiritual experience, what is, how do you experience yourself? Now let's say if someone's got uh, shortness of breath, if that's the only thing that they're experiencing, recognize that shortness of breath or a constriction uh, that seems to be within the body is an object. So it seems to have a, a width, a diameter, a shape, a texture, and there is, so you then, uh, what one do, next does is be the observer. Can one be, just like the, one can be the observer of a cup of tea, or one can be the observer of a tree, and there's that clear spiritual experience that, of observing the tree, and the tree is not the observer, or observing the mug on the table. Now this, if there's a feeling of constriction in the breathing, can you be the observer of this? And, and if the observer, and if you're in the observer, there'll be space. It'll see that the constriction is not you. You are that which is observing. That will be a spiritual experience. If, that's, uh, if, you, if you are able to experience yourself as being the observer of constriction in breathing, uh, and if this observing is somehow identifying or hooking into uh, the sense of, of uh, constricted breathing, then can you be the observer of that observer? Is there a detached observer here which is not interested in what's going on in the body? So as you go into these deeper spaces where there's no hooking in to anything that's going on to the body, uh, these, uh, these things will start to disappear from consciousness because there's no longer any identification. Also, this process is a very, very good, the observer process is a spectacular uh, clearing of letting go of the illusory things that uh, that consciousness or the limited ego is, is hooking into or identifying with, which create a limited experience of consciousness or, or a limited experience of self or a bondage to self, if you like. Okay, so that's what I would do if I'm uh, experiencing something like limited breathing. But if you are aware of the body, if there's no uh, significant feelings in the body, then see uh, if there's awareness of the body, like how tall it is, how heavy it's feeling, how it feels on the chair or whatever, then this is like an object. There's awareness that there is an object, of the, the, ob the body is an object, which is a limited object. So again, if the body is like a limited object, just like a mug or a tree, then can you now be the detached observer or the witnesser of this object? Just like there's witnessing of a mug or a tree, can you now be the witnesser, the detached witnesser of the body? And if you experience being the witnesser of the body, and if this witnesser is in any way identifying or hooking into the body, 
is there a witnesser of that witnesser? Or is there a witnesser here that has no interest or identification of the body, doesn't give any interest to the body? I.e., is there an observer or witnessing here which is bodiless? Is there, if there was constricted breathing, a witnesser here that has, is not suffering from constricted breathing? Now, the other thing that can happen is a sense of time or a sense of not being able to stay. If you get into the observer, this place of limitless presence, if there's a sense of something in consciousness wanting to not stay or jump out of this uh, observing state, there's a restlessness, for example, or even a thought of let's get out of this, this is boring or whatever it is. Be the observer of that. Can you be the observer of any thought or any restlessness that comes in? Now, if you go to the deta detached observer of any sense of restlessness or any thought of wanting to not remain here, just don't, don't hook into the thought. Go to the observer of the restlessness and see if the observer, the observing of restlessness is restless. And if it is, be the observer of that until you clear the, the restlessness. Now, if you go into the observer and you hook back into anything, just unhook and go back into the detached observer of whatever it is that seems to hook you into a limited sense of self. Also, is there a sense of time? Now, lots of people who are especially action orientated may be having a sense of tracking time or being aware of time. And if there's an awareness or a tracking of time, there is something that observes time. Can you be the detached observing of time? The witnesser, which is not interested in time. And if you're in the witnesser that's not interested in time, does time exist? So use this with your spiritual experience to see in the witnessing of time, does time exist? And if time exists, how does it exist? And can you be the witnesser? Can you be the uninterested observing? And does time exist in that observer? This can also be done, is there a sense of location? And if there is, a sense of location is a sense of limitation. It's like a sense of being limited to a location. But what witnesses or observes location? So as you do this process, um, wherever you are, see if there's any sense of limitation, constriction, thought, time, body, physical symptoms. And if there is, those are the objects. And if it's an object, can you be the observer of that object? Now, sometimes you'll hook, you'll hook back into whatever you've just gone into detached observing in, but just unhook and go back into the observer. Or see if, there, if, there's, if you keep going in and out, whether it be of thoughts, body, and see if there is a deeper observer that doesn't go in and out of wanting to hook back into thoughts and the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow about a minute of silence and then we'll, and then we'll come back into the meeting. <laughs> 